So I made a, a, a kind of like a, a comment on somebody's video. And I wanted to explain when I was talking about the police, I don't hate the police. <laughs> I don't understand why people comment in my comment section sometimes or if I comment on other people's videos. They'll sit there and act like I hate the police or like I'm just making this shit up. Like my video on my web on my uh you you um sorry YouTube channel was basically just to show you what the police are. Now I got into kind of a <laughs> somebody trying to say I was making claims against the police or about the police because I told told them the truth about the police. Okay, I'm gonna read you something. <laughs> in regards to the police for all you bootlicking ass police loving motherfuckers and think that the police is better for you or they're making the world a better place. Okay, this is something from 91 or 92. Okay, this goes back about, this is kind of like a manifesto. Let's see where this is from. Oh, I'm sorry, it's from November 2002. Okay, police departments are major participants in municipal budgeting. According to the United Department of Commerce, let me say that again, the United States Department of Commerce, <laughs> police department spent $20.9 billion in 91 through 92. Now, they're not telling you how much they do now. To a degree, municipal agencies and the budget process complete with other for limited resource compete with other for limited resources. In that competition, the police departments have a definite advantage. The public's interest in safety. Even if the crime rates fall nationwide, most police departments continue to be successful in obtaining federal and state local funding because they are a private military. Jesus Christ, man. I don't understand why I even answer people or respond to people. Yet not all departments are equally successful. Successful. Under a grant from the National Institute of Justice, the United States Department of Justice, the Police Executive Research Reform Forum undertook the project to discover why and how some police departments are much more successful than others in obtaining funding. The methodology was both quantitative and qualitative. In 1998, PERF sent a survey to all municipals and or metropolitan police departments serving more than 50,000 per son, persons. The response rate was 61%. In April 1999, PERF held a one-day focus group session with the police executives from five agencies. Four criteria were used to select the participants. Their departments have highly successfully, I'm sorry, high, have been highly successful in increasing their budgets during the fiscal year of 1997 through 98. They represented different forms of local government. They were geographically diverse. And they were diverse with respect to the size of populations. Okay, this is going to go into what I was talking about. Who the police truly were. Now, I don't hate the fucking police. I don't understand why people would think that. I'm not, I'm just telling you what they are. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with knowing what something is. Law enforcement agencies groups, their budgetary success in, uh, I'm sorry, law, law enforcement agencies gauge their budgetary success in two ways. Whether they have maintained a harmonious working relationship with the local government, ch chief of executive and budget staff, and how successful they were in expanding their prior year's budget or in the times of fiscal uh, retrain, what was that? retrenchment. Okay, so this is going into it. So this is telling you their successful budget strategies. Okay, research suggests that police 
agencies primarily employ these budget strategies. Use crime and workload work data judiciously. That means juke stats. Capitalize on sensational, sensationalized, sensationalized crime incidents. Not real crime incidents, sensationalized. Ideally not occurring locally. Carefully mobilize interest groups. That's why I tried to tell you that all fucking riots are done by your so-called government. Plan strategically. Participate carefully in federal grant processes. That's why you can't defund the police because they are part of the federal union. (laughs) They're not state government. Maintain a close working relationship with the local government Uh, chief executive and governing board members. This is why you had the lockdown because they are to follow the orders of the executive branch. Involve all levels of police department. Use that judiciously. (laughs) Wait, hold up. How can they use data judiciously when they're from the executive branch? (laughs) Government executives and police professionals have received considerable guidance on measures, measuring and evaluation of uh, police performance. Let's see. Numerous organizations and researchers have developed measures of patrol services, investigating, uh, I'm sorry, investigations, traffic services. So traffic is not a crime. That's the one thing most people catch. This is why I do videos talking about traffic, because a majority of criminal offenses are done in traffic, drug control, uh, crime prevention and control, community policing and overall police effectiveness. So this is capitalized on sensationalized crimes. Research. On the effect of sensationalized crimes on the police funding has been limited, has been limited because they are a private group and results are mixed. One survey indicated that critical incidents were not a significant factor in the budget budgetary success. Yeah, because they, they just like I told you, they do insurance policies. However, the study found that certain critical Incidents such as killing of police officers were responsible for mass infusion of resources into the problem area despite economic conditions. See, that's why they always show you a dead police officer. (laughs) People don't argue with me. You know what I'm saying? If you want to have a discussion, have a discussion. Don't argue with me because I'm going to whoop your ass because I'm going to bring all of the facts and I'm going to make you look very dumb. Don't do it. (laughs) I don't mind being wrong, but if I know what I'm talking about, I'll make a video on it. If I don't, I won't. Public public ideology. So they are implementing public ideology. This is why back in the day I did a video talking about DUIs and how DUIs were scams. Because I knew that they were fraudulent. Okay, so they, they, they they basically manipulate public ideology. Or public considerations. Mobilize interest groups. What did he say that? Yes, they mobilize interest groups like Black Lives Matter, like Antifa. (laughs) Y'all going to learn today. Government agencies often mobilize interest groups to build support for their budget request. Now, This is a twofold thing. It could be one for positive and it can be for negative because if they they raise up Antifa or allow Antifa to do what they do, then the public is going to be like, please save us, police. (laughs) Okay. Some of this I can skip over because some of it is just going to be redundant. Okay. Federal agencies are described as forming either iron triangles or issue networks. An iron triangle is a fixed relationship between legislative communities, committees, 
the agencies they oversee, their allied interest groups, issue networks. On other hand, is a loose-knit changing relationship between interest groups involved in citizens, experts, and agencies concerned with particular issues. Police departments tend to form issue networks, not iron triangles. Hootsick found the law enforcement agencies formed relationships with particular uh, oh man, I'm so far away I can't see this, and I'm tipsy to secure funding, but that such relationship were highly transitory, raising to support an agency one year and disappearing the next. This is in 1978. Police are backed by private corporations. I, I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> Police have have always naturally, uh, let's see, hold up. Constantus, man, I can't even see it. Oh my God. Uh. <laughs> have had a natural constituity, oh my goodness, of the neighborhood um, groups. Damn, I can't see. Okay. Oh, okay. They had a natural constituent. Constant, <laughs> of natural groups, civil, civic organizations, and business groups concerned about crime. Moreover, the widespread adoption of community policing has greatly expanded both the formal and informal ties that the police departments have to the community. Police agencies place school resource officers in public schools and meet routinely with established neighborhood organizations, civil groups, business groups, and victims organizations. In addition to these permanent relationships, police officers form temporary issue networks with community groups and to address particular problems, often identified by the citizens themselves. Once these problems are solved, the coalitions dissolved. Let me read that to you one more time. They're just saying, they're basically saying that the police are there just to influence the public. Okay, so this is why you see the fake George Floyd killing and all these fake shootings that's going on. In addition to the in addition to these permanent relationships police officers form temporary issue networks with community groups to address and this is why you see rappers trying to meet with the police cuz these rappers are nothing more than masons okay to address particular problems this is why you've seen the Colin Kaepernick police violence thing see what i'm saying i'm bringing it home for you y'all just need to you know take a little time i'm gonna prime your engine often identified by the citizens themselves. <laughs> it's, this is why police will allow crime. And I'm, I'm just telling you right now, this is why police will allow crime in a certain area. So then the citizens are going to be like, help, police, police, help. It's called organized chaos. Okay. Once the problems are solved, the coalitions dissolve. That means if you had any Black Panther group, if you had any group they are all federal or they're federal agencies that are formed by either police or ex-military. That's really what this means. Because the police departments are so visible in the community and crime is so emotionally laden. Let me read that one more time. Because police departments are so visible in the community and crime is so emotionally laden Police departments enjoy considerable public support, which sometimes manifests itself in the budget process, meaning propaganda. That's why I did the video. The man in blue is a friend to you with a question mark. 
I'm asking a question. 